Hello everybody and welcome back for the weekly VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your channel for everything VR related. Like normal, we'll recap all the big stories from last week, I'll prepare you for this week's new VR game releases, and then we'll focus in on one major story. Unfortunately, this was a pretty horrible week for VR, with only a minor silver lining. Multiple games are losing support, the VR chat community is in uproar, Meta actually raises the price on the Quest 2, but at least we have some positive updates for Half-Life Alex, Bone Lab, and the PlayStation VR 2. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps in the description, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, my favorite site for VR accessories. After owning 10 different headsets and countless replacement head straps, I can easily say the ones from Kiwi Design are amongst the most comfortable and durable I've ever used. If you're not in the market for a head strap, they have everything from VR stands, cable management systems, link cables, replacement facial inserts, and much more. There's a link down in the description, and don't forget to use discount code Mateo311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start this video off by blasting through some bad news. Generally, I start these videos with this week's upcoming new releases, but for the first time in basically forever, I have nothing to report for this week. To make matters worse, we're also losing access to two multiplayer games. The first is the physics-based melee fighter Swords of Gargantua, which will be shutting down their servers on September 30th. From that point, you will no longer be able to access the game from either Steam or a Quest headset. And they've also gone ahead and delisted this title so you can no longer even purchase it. Now this comes roughly three years since the game officially released, and if you'll be itching for something similar to play, the developers have a new melee title releasing at the end of this month. Altair Breaker is a four-person co-op melee title with a sword art online type of feel. It should be an excellent replacement to Swords of Gargantua, but I'm just a little concerned right now that the cancellation of their previous title might impact the studio's street cred. Well, we'll see what happens when that game releases on August 18th. Now, another title discontinuing support is Population 1 for Quest headsets. Starting October 31st, Quest 1 owners will no longer be able to access this game. Now, if you purchase the title within the last six months, you can go request a refund. And apparently, if you are in a country that is a member of the European Union, your refund window should actually be two years from date of purchase because they require all digital goods and services to remain in working order for that long. Now, Big Box's reasoning behind this is that they want to expand the title and the Quest 1 hardware is holding them back. Their official statement was, we are building big Pop 1 experiences that will push the boundaries of multiplayer VR. In order to focus our efforts on next-gen features and tech, we're ending Quest 1 support on October 31st, 2022. So there you have it, guys. The death of the Quest 1 is starting right around when we anticipated. Continuing with this week's onslaught of really crappy news, VRChat has implemented easy anti-cheat, and the community's backlash has been fierce. VRChat is definitely not a title you think about when it comes to cheating. There's no real game to be played here, it's mainly just social interaction, and it's easy to question how you can actually cheat at all. But what easy anti-cheat is actually doing is preventing the usage of any and all mods. Now this includes a slew of quality of life and accessibility mods that many users were dependent upon. An example of this was closed captioning for the deaf community and FSR support for those who suffer from low frame rates. So for some, VRChat is about to get inaccessible, suffer from lower performance, and lose some content and features that you may love. VRChat has since been review bombed on Steam into oblivion. Now, the developer's reasoning behind implementing easy anti-cheat claims that this is required to protect user accounts, as thousands may have been stolen with the use of malicious mods. Now, besides security concerns, mods are also a potential nuisance to creators, causing constant incompatibility. Now, I can't say if they're overstating these concerns, and one item I do feel that they're failing to mention is the fact that this is a monetary platform, and mods may have the potential to circumvent some paywalled features. Now, Obviously, the developers need to protect their work, and on the positive side, they have quickly responded to the community and are readjusting their roadmap to focus on natively implementing all of these features that people use mods for. Now, some of these features include a horizontal view adjustment, allowing you to do things like use the menus while laying down as if you were in a standing position. There's incoming visual adjustments, which include not only changes to the UI, but also accessibility options for colorblind individuals. We're getting custom microphone settings, personalized mirrors that you can use for full body calibration, on-touch haptics, a slew of audio updates, and much more. Now, while the gut impulse response by many individuals was, let's go check out Neos VR or Chill Out VR, I'm pretty sure all of this will settle down and most individuals will still remain on VR chat. One additional kick to the teeth for XR this week is Microsoft's military-based AR headset appears to be in trouble. 
Previously, Microsoft won a $22 billion contract to develop AR headsets for the US Army. Unfortunately, after over a year of testing, they continue to face both software, hardware, and user acceptance issues. Now, on top of this, military spending is also being reallocated and potentially cut in some instances. So it looks like we won't have any AR soldiers on the battlefield anytime soon. But let's finally switch gears for a second and give you guys some good news. We do have some minor updates on Bone Lab coming directly from developer tweets. We know that the title is fully playable from beginning to end and has been for quite some time. They're just stomping out remaining bugs and making it the best title it can possibly be. Now, another cool little update indicated that Bone Lab will have full body simulation and that you can specifically tailor it to match your physical form. Bone Lab will prompt you for your height and t-shirt size in order to approximate your body and match it to the avatar, but then you can also customize it to fully match your height, chest, waist, hips, wingspan, and inseam. Now, this is a really cool feature, and I'm curious to see how well it actually works. Continuing with some good news, and we have an amazing new Half-Life Alex mod to check out. Incursion introduces a new wave-based gameplay style mode. You'll be in a large open arena with randomized enemy spawns. You'll have to scavenge for resources to upgrade your weapon, and you can strategically place trip mines to help defend yourself. It features an hour-long campaign with non-linear objectives, and it's extremely challenging for those of you who found the campaign too easy. Now, I also want to mention the soon-to-be-released Levitation mod, which adds four to five hours of story-driven content centered around discovering the mystery of a levitating building. The quality on Half-Life Alex Levitation is top-notch to the point that it was featured on the PC gaming show. Now, there's no exact release date just yet for this mod, but it is scheduled for Q3, so we should be seeing it quite soon. In the meantime, go pick up the Incursion mod and practice taking down some Combine. Now, our good news isn't over just yet because we got a sneak peek at the Sony PlayStation VR 2. Now, we are getting some much needed features that are actually commonplace on other headsets, like a camera-based pass-through mode, so you don't have to stumble around looking for your controllers. Looks like we're also getting a standard Guardian style system where you set the boundaries of your room. There'll also be a cinematic mode. So if you wanna play your regular PlayStation 5 games on a huge virtual screen or sit back and watch some movies, you can definitely do that. And it will even support stereoscopic content like 3D Blu-rays. But the best feature, in my opinion, is the ability to seamlessly record or stream yourself with just the use of an additional PlayStation 5 camera. The system will crop out your background and overlay you into the game. The simplicity here cannot be overstated, and it feels like Sony recognized how annoying content creation is on the Quest 2 platform and wants to make sure it's easier for the PlayStation VR 2. Now, the news I really would have loved to hear is a release date, but we're still waiting on that. But this news was definitely better than nothing. But unfortunately, let's jump back to some crappy news. The FTC is once again after Meta, trying to block their purchase of Supernatural. The FTC is once again accusing Meta of anti-competitive business practices. Rather than building things themselves, they're just trying to buy their way to the top. Now, this has been a continued issue with Meta, and it kind of feels hard to deny when you consider the fact that they purchased Beat Games, Sanzaru Games, Ready at Dawn, Downpour Interactive, and Big Box VR. So basically, if you make a popular VR game, Meta just swoops in and acquires you. That does sound pretty anti-competitive to me. And continuing with that same notion, Meta can be accused of undercutting the entire VR industry by subsidizing their Quest 2 headset to a point where no one else could compete. And now that they own the market, they are raising the price on the headset. That's right, after nearly two years, the price of a piece of hardware is actually going up over 30%. This is completely unheard of. Now, it's one thing for the Valve Index to remain at $1,000 three years later, but that headset has always been in high demand, and Valve has no reason to lower the price. They can't compete with a subsidized $300 Quest 2, and they never made much profit on that headset to begin with. Now, jumping back to the Quest 2, Meta stated the money is required to keep moving the VR industry forward in the long term. Now, it's definitely true they couldn't continue their current mode of operation, where they're burning tens of billions every year on XR and only making a handful back. Now, this can be a result of the looming recession or the fact that shareholders are getting antsy with the continually dropping stock price or meta is saying hey there's no competition and we can do whatever the hell we want now from a money standpoint we do not have official figures from meta but it was estimated that they were losing up to a hundred dollars on the sale of every single headset now if they expect to sell another 10 million quest 2s that's about a billion dollars when it comes to what they're spending in xr this really feels like a drop in the bucket now as a consolation you get a free copy of beat saber when you buy a quest 2 but i think that's another strategic move because Meta expects you to buy some DLC down the road. Now there's one more potential reason here. The launch of Project Cambria is rapidly approaching and it looks like this headset is going to be $1,500. 
raising the price of the Quest 2 may help a little bit with optics there, or they could just want some additional cash on hand to help streamline some aspect of the Cambria release. Unfortunately though, without a lot of information that Meta is not willing to give us, all we can do is speculate here. So ultimately, I can't say if this is greed, strategic long-term planning, the response to a looming recession, shareholder pushback, or part of a strategy for the Project Cambria release. But one thing I can say for sure is if you have a Quest 2 and it's just been sitting in your closet collecting dust and you never use it, now is the time to sell it. It's the best chance you'll ever get to make all of your money back. Okay, everybody, that was today's weekly news. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish I had more positive stuff to report, but if you enjoyed this, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.